Welcome to the 5-8, where we discuss each of the week's five most effed up topics for eight minutes each. Five topics, eight minutes, two hosts, one guest, some singing, a lot of curse words, and as many cocktails as we deem necessary. LB, how are you? I'm well. How are you? I'm so uh, much better than, you look than better. I have been. I'm yeah. feeling better. It's a little tiny bit. Um, it's a heck of a cold, but I'm feeling better. What are you drinking? This is um, it, it, it's lime juice and tequila with ice. Oh, fresh lime juice from the lime juicing thing that that you gave me. I I heard oh. something in the background there when yeah. the show with the microphone. I was like, "What's he doing?" My wife did it. It was very nice. That's uh, so nice. It was very lovely. I I've had I had quite a, my... a weird. Uh... Oh, what are you having? I'm having my water. It's so exciting. Okay, that's good. Yeah, but it's not, you like know. a special kind of water. It's just tap. There's, there's, it's actually a tonic water, but it, it doesn't have the Rose's Lime Juice, which is normally my drink. Okay. Uh, and I'm fine with that. I don't know what it has in it. It does feel like he, he, my husband puts, puts, makes it for me. But okay. I think so. You don't know that you don't know the ingredient. I can't yeah. make a, a, a margarita, by the way. I just I've tried so many times that I've oh, failed really? miserably so many times. Oh. So if anybody watching has a good like easy margarita thing, you know, let me know. Um, I, I'd be grateful. Um, we have to say a, a big congrats to President Xi of China, by the way. Did you, did you hear oh, about this? Oh, what did he do for us? There, apparently there's some election that he won and uh, it was very close. Oh, oh it was, very uh, close. 2,952 to zero. Oh. Um, and he, you know, he Squeaker. squeaked by. Squeaked by. Yeah. Squeaker. Yeah. So yeah. I guess we're going to be seeing that guy for a while. Um, yeah, I think we're stuck know. with him. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately. Yeah. Um, okay. And then I want to say... Right at the top of the show. I want to thank everybody. I saw like right in the comments as we were getting ready to come on air, a couple of new members. You know, we love the subscriptions. We love the membership. That is actually how you can support us. So it's just, you know, we tear it up there. One ninety nine a month helps us out as little as that sounds. We do put stuff together here. Um, and we just like having you in there. And we do give things like extra content and after show. Was it last week we did an after? We did an after, after hours. hours. We yeah. did an after hours. After hours. Um, last week, somehow. Yeah. Somehow. I, 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 <laughs> oh, yeah, you played. Greg played guitar. I did. I played it guitar. It was quite lovely. Yeah. Can't promise that every week, but mostly just yeah. to support us. We appreciate the support. We're not doing it this week. Maybe we'll do it next week. Next week's St. Patrick's Day, by the way. Oh, well, then we're doing something. Maybe I'll share my... I can't give away my secret soda bread recipe but oh okay well that's not gonna help me because i'm i don't live where you live so i'll, I'll show something yeah. i can show something maybe maybe i'll make some soda bread for everybody okay. okay so before we dive into our topics we did have a special request coming in from uh who you'll see in their line of judy i don't know if he's with us tonight but david benjamin uh, to talk about silicon valley bank so we weren't prepared for a segment on that because that news is just sort of breaking today uh, but we will come back next week and talk about that because it it does feel to me, uh, Greg, like we had, of course, it's inflation rates and the kind of bank this is and how they lend and da da da. And there's a very sort of dry, economic driven, you know, uh, non nefarious reason we can say that the bank collapsed. But also, it does feel like a Bear Stearns kind of moment <laughs> of like, yeah. yeah, let that one go. We're going to let that topple down um, uh, because there's, you know, this is a, a notorious bank in terms of how it invested in Silicon Valley startups and what they were. And also in a lot of, in some Hollywood money too. So all of the worst characters you can imagine out of Silicon Valley seem somehow tied into that bank in some way. So we'll, we'll take a look at that um, next week. So it's a clever name. Out. I'd never heard of it. Silicon Valley. You bank. never heard clever. of it. Yeah, it is. Why would I hear about this? I, I I live in upstate New York. We don't have that shit here. Oh, it's, all right. Yeah. I, I, you don't have a branch of the Silicon Valley I Bank. Was about that bank. I'm like, yeah. I don't know about this it's bank. Not, uh, yeah. They know. seemed ready to go know. with all of the with all of the uh Peter Thiel stuff. So all right, we'll talk about it next week. Yeah, next week we're talking about it. Thank you for bringing that up. And uh do I have anything else to say at the beginning? I thought the weather. Oh, we have so to talk about the weather for one second oh. because you you have oh he is here uh that, okay it, there's weather in california go figure and um hopefully you I will mean, not rain again yeah, yeah. It, it's actually looking okay i'm looking oh no here comes the front it was supposed to another front was supposed to come in at four 
Um, it looks a little late, but it looks like it's coming. So if I freeze and then disappear, it's because my power went out again. Because yeah. power's going out all over the place. Yeah. So it might be a shorter show tonight. We'll see. So I'm not going to do all five topics on my own. So which means probably that we should get started, I guess. Let's go. Yeah. Okay. All right. You do it. You go. Kick us off. Here all right. We're done with this, my, my intro thing. Okay. So last week I talked about Leonard Leo. I wrote about Leonard Leo at Prevail on Tuesday. For anybody that doesn't know who this guy is, he's the, the sort of dark money, radical Catholic. I call them the radical Catholic Oz behind the curtain who maneuvers all this money around in dark money groups like the Federalist Society is heavily involved with the Federalist Society. Uh, judicial, uh, what is it called? Judicial crisis. Net. I get the names mixed up. And then that, that's changed to something else. Beckett Fund. And there's a couple of other, you know, and they're constantly changing and he's, you know, moving this money around. He got a $1.6 billion uh, gift donation from Barry Zaid, the, the nonagenarian hateful, you know, super rich guy who just yeah. wants his dying wish to fuck everybody over on planet earth. Um, anyway, so Leonard Leo is, uh, and he's a Knight of Malta. He's a steward of St. Peter. And he's just the guy from central yeah. Jersey. You know, all those things mean is that he gave money to the church basically, but, um, yeah. he likes to think that it means something else, but it means that he gave money to the church. And he's one of these guys that's associated with, uh, the C uh, Catholic information center, which was headed by the Opus Dei priest. So you've got all of that stuff going on. And he's the guy that picked all the justices for the Supreme court. All of Trump's guys. Oh, Trump. He's good yeah. friends with Clarence Thomas. You know, he's, yeah. he was there with the Roberts thing. The elite. He he is more responsible than any other person for Dobbs. That's who this mm -hmm. guy is. Okay, mm -hmm. and he's now gone into this for-profit thing where he's like paying his for-profit things money from his nonprofit, um, which you know it's legal, but you know it's not. I don't know what's the saying about the old camel in the eye of the needle. LB, you're the minister's daughter. Didn't you know this? Oh, you got to grease that baby up. You do. So and that's what he's doing. I, I also, he's like a dandy Humpty Dumpty to me. Like every time I see him, I'm that's all I can see is this sort of this, uh, this little dandy. I just said, I described him in the original dandy. thesis. It's very weird. I described him as, um, if Penguin worked at Jones Day, that was my description. I think that's pretty, pretty bang on. So anyway, yeah, I'm just minding my business this week. And, and uh, Andy Kroll at, ProPublica wrote this article and there is a video of this guy talking oh. and um, he's involved with this new project called, I think it's the Teneo or it's the Teneo, like Leo, maybe it's two oh. people's names together. I don't know. They're, oh. they're not very, they're not very creative. Can and it be like Brangelina or something? I, I don't know. What, I, honestly, is this a Benifer I, moment? I, for I cannot presume, Leo? Oh, I bet he's so thrilled with this. I cannot presume yeah. to know what goes on in, in the very creative artistic stylings of his brain. But I thought we need to answer his question. So um, this is the video, um, again, courtesy of, of Andy Kroll at ProPublica. And uh, due to formatting errors, I just recorded it on my phone and then playing it for you, just so you get a sense of what this guy is, okay? okay. I spent close to 30 years, if, if not more, helping to build the conservative legal movement. And at some point or another, you know, I just said to myself, well, if this can work for law, why can't it work for lots of other areas of American culture and American life where things are really messed up right now? Wokeism in the corporate environment, in the educational environment, one-sided journalism, entertainment that's really corrupting our youth. Why can't we build talent pipelines and networks that can positively affect those areas as well? Okay, so I thought, you know, again, he's now he's not he's not he's not satisfied with just ruining the Supreme Court and and hurting every woman in the country. You know, he's not satisfied with that. He has to have more. So he has questions. I think we're going to answer the questions. He wants to know if this can't work for law, why not for um, messed up, quote unquote, areas like corporate wokeism is what he calls it. And I think that means actually diversity, um, which Probably. there's. There's so many business cases for diversity and there have been for, so I've worked in HR like 25 years ago. Mm -hmm. And even then everyone knew this, this isn't a mystery. Like, Hey, the more wide the net is cast, the more talent, the, the, the companies attract. Right. Duh. So I guess that's bad. Well, I also think there's something in there. I hear a hobby lobby thing in there of like, mm. you know, it's like you can't force us to provide birth control. 
uh, for women employees. Or there's it, it, there's always this misogynistic, you know, controlling women kind of Absolutely. undercurrent with this guy. Yeah. Educational wokeism, which is going on right now in Florida, which the other thing we mentioned with the college there where they're, yeah. um, you know, overhauling the board and all this stuff. And that's going to be a battleground for what, you know, uh, institutions of higher learning are going to be. Are they going to be what they're supposed to be? Are they going to be basically dogma machines for this jerk and his radical, ridiculous views? One-sided journalism. That's rich. I, I feel like he's read my piece and he's talking to me. I'm very flattered. Okay. He, maybe he did. It's one-sided. And the side is, I'm right and you're an asshole. That's the side. It's the only <laughs> side that there is. Uh, uh, youth corrupting entertainment. That's really yes, more your Yes, entertainment corrupting our youth. Oh, my God. Whatever oh will we my. do? Is I he talking about talking this, this hip-hop? I think drag shows, for sure, mm, yeah, um, yeah. is like on his this guy's docket. I, I just think anything that th that is a confrontation of his own inner struggles around his own masculinity and possible waistline is probably <laughs> right. I'm sorry, but come on, come on, this guy. I, 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 yeah, I can't. I and can't. then the other question is why Leonard Leo wants to know why, oh, why can't mm -hmm. we build talent pipelines and networks that can positively affect those areas as well? Meaning, why can't we have like, you know, conservative, radical Catholic, uh, you know, fundamental Christian nationalist kind of things? And our friend Asia Raiden answered the question. And here I, it's so good. I just I, I put the thing and she said, neat idea. What are they going to do about the charisma problem? They're not funny. They're not talented. They're not smart. They're not interesting. They're not particularly watchable. There's a reason only hardcore conservatives turn into hardcore conservative media. I'd add also not easy on the eyes. I don't know if you saw that clip, but they're, you know, if that's the best they got to put, put front and center in the video. Yeah. Mm. Look, he's got a lot of money now because of that crazy man that left him stuff. So if he wants to throw all of that money, especially towards entertainment and think that this is going to somehow produce more money for him in the environment we're in with the artless crowd that he's left with, then by all means, please pour all your money into that. Yeah. Good luck to you. Yeah. Good luck to you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's what I have to That's say. all I got. I couldn't believe I've never heard him talk before. It was such a gift to me to hear this idiot Aww. talk. Yeah. yeah. How, did he, I, I, how did he sound to you? He sounded like a guy who didn't get into the school play and is still pissed about it 50 years <laughs> well, maybe later. Maybe he can do it, pull a James O'Keefe and actually fund his musical theater dreams. Yeah. Um, that And spend There's all the a lot the of musical there. theater going on in this episode. It's a lot of musical theater yeah. with these artless fox. Yeah. All right. That's all, all I right. got. Are we on time? Where were we in time? Yes. Six seconds. Five, four, <laughs> three, two, one. You're doing okay. great. I love it. All right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kind of go off of what he talked about there. Because this, I was having a conversation with a friend who was like, you know, you guys should really talk about this whole woke thing and where that word and term came from and just remind mm. everybody the origins of it and how, why it's been so ripe for weaponization. So a, a couple of things. I did go to Wikipedia. Don't at me about that. Is you can click on the links and see, all right, you know, you know, with for the references. And so I'm going to only quote the stuff that is the references that I checked out that check out. Uh, but it is important to remind, uh, you know, everyone what woke, where it came from, what it means. I think, right, just give that context of it. Um, and it is a, a vernacular that's derived from African American culture. It just is. So, this is a, an appropriated thing now. Um, and there's no, to me, there's no question about the cultural appropriation that happened with this. And we were all here on Twitter watching it go down. Um, and it's was it's become quite embarrassing, I think, in that way, um, in terms of how it was taken over and the context it was taken from and the origins it was taken from. So um, there's quite a history to the use of that word um, in African-American culture, but one of the, it, it did kind of 
land in music before it landed in any kind of political discourse, as things tend to do for um, people who actually are artists, unlike Leonard Leo. Uh, so there's a, a, a black African, uh, a black American uh, folk singer songwriter, Paddy Ledbetter, also known as Lead Belly used the phrase near the end of a 1938 recording. It'd been like around a little bit, but he's the one who really put it into a song. Uh, his song, Scottsboro Boys, which tells the story of nine black teenagers accused of raping two white women, um, falsely accused, of course. And his quote, his lyric was, I advise everybody to be a little careful when they go along through there. Best stay woke, keep their eyes open. So it's really sort of a calling to black Americans to like, this threat is still out there. It's out there in a in a way that is ruining our lives, right? In terms of how to function in society with white Americans who will just, you know, flagrantly abuse power to accuse innocent Black Americans of heinous crimes in order to control them. Um, by the mid twentieth century, what could be come to mean well informed or aware especially in political or cultural sense. The Oxford English Dictionary traces the earliest such usage to a 1962 New York Times Magazine article titled, If You're Woke, You Dig It, by the novelist William Melvin Kelly, African-American, describing the appropriation of black slang by white beatniks. Mm. He was even calling it out like, yeah, you're appropriating it because you're trying to be cool. And, you know, this is really about a pain and suffering happening within our community and a, a warning and a sort of call to sort of stay aware, you know, we'll get, stay woke to what's could be coming for us, right? So that there's with some sense of protection um, amongst the black American community for, that they could have for one another. Um, then in 71, it gained more political connotation uh, when the play Garvey Lives by Barry Beckham included the line, I've been sleeping all my life, and now that Mr. Garvey done woke me up, I go and stay work woke, and I go and help him wake up other black folk. So also like, be aware, look out. It's you know, don't don't walk into dangerous stuff. Have one another's backs, that kind of thing. And that there was, you know, we're up. The black Americans were up against this uh, incredibly oppressive system of politics <clears throat> that were had political connotations. All right, so guys, that is the history. Um, then we go, we go to like what was interesting is Pussy Riot over in Russia grabbed onto this before it came into the Black Lives Matter mu movement after Ferguson um, and got, kind of got reawakened there. So uh, they began to signify a progressive outlook on a host of issues as well as on race. Um, and this happened in a tweet. So the... Uh, Pussy Riot members have been in prison in 2012. Uh, Erica Badu actually was noticing what was happening with Pussy Riot. These women that had been jailed for being, I, I love Pussy Riot. I'm sorry. I do everybody. Ra you know, this radical voices in Russia, you know, and these women willing to go to prison for, for their art and for their voices. And it was Erica Badu who wrote, truth requires no belief. Stay woke. Watch uh, closely. Hashtag free Pussy Riot. And then in the know your meme where they go into that, like when was this became a hashtag stay woke. Okay. So that was the first time it entered into the social media discourse as something that was sort of could spread wildly. And then we had the shooting of Michael Brown in Ferguson in 2014. Okay. And it broadened from there. And then of course, a bunch of white women got in there. Like, I'm woke. Are you woke? <laughs> like appropriated the whole thing. And it just kind of became chaotic. Why is that important? Okay. All right. You think, I don't think it's just Ron DeSantis all of a sudden coming out of nowhere going, we're going to fight wokeism. There was intention on this. It needed to hit that sort of broader spectrum, I think, for the worst of the worst chaos agents to get in there and weaponize it. I think it's worth everyone reminding everyone that that is the way these things go down. Um, that is how the what was the far right, which is now the center right, just the Republican Party, gets their content about the libs and the enemy. And they have all their propaganda to create a, a global they out there. 
<coughs> excuse me, that's coming to get them, you know? <coughs> so sorry guys. So we have Steve Bannon in 2016. Now that it's sort of, it, everyone's going, Oh, we're woke. I'm woke. Are you woke? And it's white, white women doing this primarily and white people trying to trying to feel like they've got the, you know, they're allies, but it's just not the way to be an ally. Um, uh, Steve Bannon is looking at all that and remember what he had to say in 2017. This is a quote from Steve Bannon. The longer they talk about identity politics, because again, it had gone from this very specific thing about oppression and violence against uh, black Americans in, within the uh, judicial system and the political system. It, it got brought into just be identity politics, woke about anything that is a progressive thing, right? That's being woke. Soon as that happened, Steve Bannon is on this thing. The longer they talk about identity politics, meaning Democrats, I got them. I want them to talk about racism every day. If the left is focused on race and identity and we go with economic nationalism, we can crush the Democrats. And it's just, so I don't, it's, this was a, a semantic and a thought sort of content, uh, political thought, experiment that was just handed to the likes of Steve Bannon and all of his chaos agents and all of what is now the Republican party for them to just weaponize the hell out of this. Um, it just, you know, I don't, I just wanted to give that history in that context because I think we're going to see 2024, the entire Republican platform is only going to be anti-woke. That's all it's going to be. We got to fight wokeism. It's the boogeyman now in the room. And I know there was a lot of other stuff we wanted to include in that, Greg, that that we're out of time to get to. And just everybody think about that. How did that evolve? The fact that it's based in appropriation. And now it's this thing that is going to be a very effective weapon, I think, for Republicans. It's empty. It's not a platform of anything. It's just a way to spew hate and to have it be in a package that makes the haters feel like, and the people who have all that rage feel like they're in some kind of righteous crusade against something that's coming for their kids and coming for their, coming for their culture and coming for all this stuff. But, you know, it's something that, that the carelessness and of, of people trying to like exuberantly embrace something and go for it and, and then use it for their own means without any sense awareness of historically what it means. That sort of carelessness has brought us to this moment. I I mean, it has to do with what, what Billy Ray was talking about a couple of weeks ago, where he was talking about when things move too quickly, culturally, and people get uncomfortable in the yeah. middle. Um, a yeah, couple of points. We have, we have these accelerant, uh, I'm sorry, we have these accelerant things now that weren't yeah. present before, even in the 90s or early 2000s with with social media, it just it, everything goes so fast and it just spreads so quickly um, that it, it makes people uncomfortable. Yeah. Yeah. Um, a couple of points based on what you were saying. Um, yeah. I did not know that that the pussy riot hashtag was really the original thing. Oh my God! It has to do with Russia. What a surprise! What a surprise! I who would have thought that that would you know seen that yeah. coming? And yeah. I I thought that these guys, these Republican you know MAGA jerks, positioning themselves as anti woke and wearing that badge proudly, is so un unironic. I guess I don't even I know. know. I don't even know where it falls on the irony scale because if you go back to the lead belly original use of it. It just means vigilance. It means stay That's vigilant. Right. And he's DeSantis is saying, do not be vigilant. That's what he's saying. Go yeah. back to sleep, sheep. Don't yeah. be vigilant. Nothing yeah. to see here. Please disperse. And these morons are falling for it. They're well, they can it. say anti-woke and we can hashtag back sound asleep. <laughs> you're sound asleep. Why is this something that you're embracing to be, you know, to be sheeple? Yeah. Sound yeah, asleep, a sheeple, maybe. Uh, we'll figure it out. We'll figure but it out. Be ready for it, everybody. Okay. Our guest is here, but then she's not here. But I don't, it doesn't matter. We're going to, we're no, going to, she's, oh, she's here. Okay, good. We have a quick, we got to play our, we got to do our karaoke and then we're going to, we're going to, we're going to bring her on. Okay.
Speaking of musical theater and Ron DeSantis. But who is this Casey DeSantis? Is she the queen of Tallahassee? She's like a Vita without charisma. She won't get famous. She is too desperate. She met him on the golf course. She locked him down. Yes, she molded her meatball man. Now they're the Florida Bolsonaro's. It is a crackdown. They're firing the teachers and banning the books. They both want to wear a crown. It is worse than it looks. And that's who is Casey DeSantis. Think she's the queen of Tallahassee. She's like a Vita without charisma. Vote out her husband. He is a fascist. Fuck off DeSantis. You are a fascist. We must fight the woke in our schools. We must fight the woke in our businesses. We must fight the woke in government agencies. We can never, ever surrender to woke ideology. And I'll tell you this, the state of Florida is where woke goes to die. <laughs> I'm a little bit on Randy Rainbow's corner there, so, but, you know, it's okay. I think I think he can forgive me. He can forgive uh, you. Yeah, I was listening to Evita all week. I love Evita. It's like really my favorite musical. <laughs> Uh, my kids are so don't ever want to hear it and they think it's terrible. So, <laughs> it's a musical um, about horrible people. I know, yeah. but it's great. It's wonderful. <laughs> um, okay, without further ado, our guest uh, is a journalist, a documentary film producer, a best selling author of seven, is it seven books, including Virus and the Trump Women, Nina Burley. Welcome Nina Burley! Welcome back to the five eight. Kids. Look, a new look on for Nina Burley and a new background. I love it so much. I'm in the city tonight. Oh yay! Uh, okay. okay, okay. We are post COVID now for sure. We are post COVID. I've been teaching in person at NYU every week this winter, but oh, I'm leaving fun. the country tonight or tomorrow. So. You are all right. Can you say where you're going? Oh, somewhere hot. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> So not California, certainly. That's, that's no, not California. not California. Um, that was great. That first of all, genius um, uh, song there, and that's you. That's your voice, Craig. Yeah, unfortunately. I'm so impressed. Thank you. Thank I'm you. so impressed. You're writing, and singing, and then you're putting together, putting it together with Madonna. No, that's yeah. that's her. That's Stephanie did that part. That yeah. was genius. Yeah. Um, you guys are just doing so great. And also, I came on halfway through the Taneo video of Leonard Leo, his um, his ad. You know, that's fantastic stuff. Where is that? Where did you if, find? If you that? go on my pay on my Twitter feed, I tweeted. You tweet so like you're still day. tweeting. I thought you guys bailed on Twitter. You're, nah, no, you're yeah, still in there. Yeah, you but I, I don't go on it that much, but I do go on. Like right now, one must go on because Elon Musk is amplifying these J6, our, our Antifa people. Yeah. And, you know. Uh, or as we call them, Nazis. Yes. Yeah. We call them Nazis and they call them Antifa. And, you know, they're cherry picking out like, oh, there's this transgender woman. And there's like, there is one Antifa guy that they've identified. And. You know, you just have to keep posting the the um, the stories about all of the yeah. Proud Boys and the Oath Keepers and the fascists who have um, pled guilty. I mean, and who have given testimony to what they were up to. Mm -hmm. Every bit of that needs to be up there, and it needs to be up there in in some kind of ballast against his million followers that he's feeding this spew to. Um, it just pisses me off. I mean, I I. Every once in a while, yeah. I feel like I need to give him the benefit of the doubt, you know, that maybe he's just kind of misguided. Um, no, he's awful on and has First been and stuff. No. And then I'm like, no, he's actually malignant. 
and yes. he has these, you know, he has the, um, this plan to like spew this stuff out there. I mean, first, the first thing he did was destroy a community. I mean, it took me a while to understand that. I mean, it, what they did, what he did to Twitter was destroy a community. That's right. Um, a conversation and a community has been, has been eradicated. Like, you know, like the library in Alexandria in, you know, mm -hmm. ancient times. I mean, yeah. he literally has just destroyed it. Yeah. And so you can't see, you can't communicate with people that you used to communicate with, you know, and I'm getting these, his, his pals, like this woman, Mindy Robinson, uh, dot, you know, flag, um, who he's retweeting on the Antifa stuff. And I, she caught my attention because I just finished this novel that has, uh, something to do with the Las Vegas massacre. And, um, she's tweeting this conspiracy stuff about it in which, you know, she's worked out this whole theory about like black helicopters and it must've been a false flag. And she's like batshit crazy. Yeah. And she's being retweeted by somebody with a million, I don't know how many million followers he owns. He's million. a billionaire who owns the, yeah. owns the platform. Essentially everybody on Twitter is a follower of Elon Musk, even if he's blocked because it's impossible. Yes. Okay. This is true. Yeah. But I mean, see. it's incredible. Like he's just, he selected out this person to, um, to to retweet and now he's retweeting Jonathan Turley and you know these people who are sort of trying to uh I mean well they're whitewashing one six they're trying to make it look like it was a lefty plot and um since Fox News never actually covered the hearings right. or any factual reality related to that day you have to rely on the common sense of people who were alive and paying attention on that day. And I think there are a lot of Americans who were on that side, actually paying attention who yes. might not fall for this bullshit. I think there, th those who fall for it are in the minority, but you know, they're going to make the excuse that it was, um, you know, just tourists going in there or, you know, Antifa was whipping up the, and you know, no, it's it's actual. It was an actual fascist military operation involving people who had caged weapons in northern Virginia. And we only barely escaped by the skin of our teeth. So um, to have this person who's got this incredible following and this huge amount of money amplifying that bullshit is really important um, to pay attention to. And I think everybody needs to. Um, fight back by filling his his thread with the facts so that you know anybody who's paying attention to it can actually see those facts now i'm not sure that it's effective but i think i still have you know maybe it's the midwestern pollyanna in me i still have faith that there are even on their side people who are um reasonable and I, I don't mean, you know, the 30 percent base, but I no, know I, I, that, that I there are people who are reasonable enough to uh, yeah. recognize what the reality was. And that's why we got the midterm results that we did. Yeah, I think I think it's a lot of noise from us that uh, we have more votes <laughs> if they if we, if we keep uh, exercising them. Um. It's interesting. I, I have him blocked. I haven't been in there. I don't, I cannot do that with my time. I, I just, for me personally, I have to guard my heart right now and my mind and focus on priorities that I have in front of me rather than being a, a Twitter warrior. Uh, right. I, 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 get that. I mean, I don't, and you know what, LB, yeah. I don't get, I don't spend much time Twitter warrior. But I, but I, but I, wanted, I just happened to go on there yesterday. Yeah. And noticed what was going on and thought, you know, this deserves a this deserves a response. I, yeah, um, I wanna, but I anyway, wanna... that's not that's not what we're here to talk about. I mean, he's you know he's going to drive that thing into the ground. You know, Zuckerberg's going to step up with some some you know new platform. These platforms come and go, but it's kind of sad because it was a useful tool. Um, it connected a lot of people. We wouldn't know each other without it. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Um, it connected people and it made a community and, um, you know, it's unfortunate that, that this is happening. Maybe, maybe it'll survive. I don't know. Maybe he'll pass. He'll get tired of his toy and pass on. 
Um, but um, yeah, pretty messed up, dude. I, I must say. Um, well, did you did you see the congressional hearings on the that Jim Jordan was leading on the Twitter files? Did you? I just saw that? again. I just saw little Twitter bits about with what Matt Taibbi was there and yeah. right. Yeah. <laughs> he was on the case. I guess. I guess it's all settled. You know, I mean, more manufactured bullshit. I mean, Matt Taibbi. I'm going to tell you about Matt Taibbi. Matt Taibbi was, you know, somebody I respected. I really liked his writing. And in, um, I guess, 2017, I wrote a piece about the Me Too movement. And in passing, I mentioned what had been mentioned by a lot of other. Uh, sites like Jezebel and women, women have been writing about how he and his buddy, when they were in Moscow, wrote this book about their Moscow time. And it's just filled with this, you know, laughing, snort, chortling about how they were harassing these Moscow, these Russian women yeah. in their offices. Underage girls. And um, yeah. we, I mentioned it in passing in one sentence and he came after the publication that I wrote for and literally tried to sue them. And that I think that's when he went off the deep end. I think it was when that's when he went anti woke because, you know, he was called out for this stuff and he was insisting that, well, it was just a satire. Well, no, it was a nonfiction book. And that was funny then what they were doing. I mean, and it was gross. You know, it was like, you know, um, oh, it was horrible. It was we saw, you know, what I'm I talking saw about. it. So, yeah, yeah. I, so Matt, you know, sorry yeah. to see that happen. But, you know, it's like Matt Greenwald. I mean, these guys, you know, they're entitled. They they have, you know, had big contracts and, um, you know, yay. To, uh, your pals now with Elon Musk, he calls you up and gives you a, a file to look at. Yay. That's great. Congratulations. You're There's right. literally inside, inside no amount man of on campus. Can I just, I want to make this point. Inside that files in what we what we also now know um through other reporting and and exposures through i think it even came out through a court case is the person who there there was somebody that was um had a position of authority and power at that time that was sending threats to twitter and saying we want you to take this down we want you to promote this that was using their power uh and the profound power to get twitter to silence critics and that was Donald fucking Trump when yep. he was president of the United States. So none of that showed up in Matt Taibbi's, you know, his whole thing. Right, 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 um, right. So the, it, it is, this is shilling. This is not journalism. This is PR. And it's being done with a tremendous amount of intention by right. somebody who, well, when look, was, he, he was he, in he, Moscow, he, he, was compromised. I'll just Google. go back to what I know about you know? it. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, the reason he's doing it is, he got called out. He was humiliated. He, he didn't like the way injury. women were talking about him. Yeah. It was so unfair. Oh, poor me. Mm. You know, and um, and it's just, you know, just another um, example of, of, you know, entitlement and power being inf infringed upon or impinged upon by people who have less power. And it pisses him off so much that he goes to the other side. That's who he is. That's what it is. But um can we talk a little bit more about um, this Leonard Leo? And I'm yeah. sorry, I need to go back, but I yeah. mean, can I, wait, can that, I, that, I I'm doing the, a, I'm uh, doing a feature on Barry side. I've been working on it for a long time. Oh. The guy who gave him the, yeah. the, you know, who's like in the, you know, his, his face is like chiseled into Mount Rushmore as like Henry Potter of, you know, the, the, the banker in, um, it's a wonderful, it's a wonderful life. life. Like he just loves capitalism so much that mm -hmm. he gave his entire fortune to a man who is guaranteed to bulwark power against the powerless. I mean, you got to think about that for a minute. Like he didn't even leave any money for like dogs and cats in Chicago. <laughs> you know, it's insane. Yeah. It's, a, it's a kind of a, well, I mean, what is that? You know? And so I've been working on it for a long time and, and, We've been trying to figure out what what Leonard Leo is going to do with it. Well, you know, when you when he brought up the you know, we're going to go after entertainment, that we're going to create like a federalist society, little um, uh, incubator for, you know, I guess like like what they did with the Lloyd with the legal system. Like, let's get an incubator and make artists right wing 
actors, you know, go to Hollywood and make right wing movies. It reminded me so much of Steve Bannon yeah. and really the, the kind of rosebud of Steve Bannon is he was trying to make movies in yes. L.A. Yeah, he didn't get anywhere because he's not any good at it. No, he's pissed off. And That's he's, right. you know, he's pissed off because nobody would pay attention to him and because he's a fat, schlumpy guy who beats his wives or whatever. And he's never going to get anywhere in, in that business. And so you have now Leonard Leo, like the mask is off now that he's managed to get like, you know what, the political story says that he got forty three million dollars from those nonprofits that he controls into no. his personal. Into he got forty three from the new one plus 15 from the old one. 58 altogether. Just oh, to be all right. Well, thanks. So good. Sure. Do the math. So, okay. Half a hundred million um, dollars. And then what he's getting into like the vineyard business or something. And he got himself a castle in Maine. And now Two. what do you do next when you've got all that? Well, you got to go to Hollywood because eventually, you know, politics, what do they call it? Pol James Carville said, Washington is Hollywood for ugly people. It's like now he can finally get his narcissistic, you know, uh, pet petting. Um, Good luck. Uh, I'll just keep massage. saying. That. It's like he's got to go to LA him. now and and take over take over the culture and and get young people to watch whatever anti woke rap is going to be or whatever they're going to create. I have been in this industry. That is laughable. Long, I've been in this industry for a long time, Nina. I I read Steve Bannon's crap script. It was Why? going around. Oh, because I'm a screenwriter. And it's like, it's like, I it, I think it was passed to me to adapt. Um, but I, I don't remember to fix in some way, not ad adapt, but fix. George Clooney read it. It, it, it. He had, Bannon got himself into a position where any other white man in the power position he had that had a script that had the kind of connections he had that he was passing it from for production company, production company, studio head to studio head, you know, the script was making the rounds. Can you do anything with this? If there was a scintilla of talent. That's hilarious. The tiniest little bit of talent would have made it. This guy had every fucking privilege that you can have in in my industry, and nobody would touch that fucking turd. It was and so just bad. Sitting there, was you know, so bad. Just I remember how bad it fucking was. He's fulminating over it 20 years later. Oh, he, he he's never a got over it. It's like the original, what do yes. they call it? Like narcissistic injury or something. That's what I just pop, said. I don't, my pop psychology, injury. I'm not really up yeah. on, but it's that, it's like this original wound that they yeah. can't get rid of. I can't even tell you how many people saw it, how many people read it, how many people just, like, oh God, that, uh, it was just, it just, uh, because he had that but kind of power. doesn't the psychology injury. fascinate you? Of these people. No, because I'm around these fucking losers all the fucking time. And there's like a swamp of it. There's just a swamp of these people. Everybody wants to do my job. Everybody thinks they can do it. Every motherfucker that watch has a good time watching some movie that they like thinks that they can fucking screenwrite or thinks that they can like make it. You no, know, you can't. It's so fucking hard. Number one. Number well, two. Well, it's like Elon Musk saying citizen journalists should replace journalists. Fuck you. You don't know what Mindy you're Mindy Robinson, doing. You who makes up black helicopters, what? should replace, you know, the New York Times coverage of the Las but Vegas it's shooting. It's impossible to make money. It's so hard to make money. So many people throw money at the movie industry, hope that are just have wealth. Because there's, they have a favorite movie from the childhood and they have a fantasy that they're going to be a movie producer and see their name in lights and sit at the dinner table with Leo DiCaprio and be out of the... They, they're sycophants. They're just all fucking sycophants. And they all lose their money. Every single one of them, it just goes down the goddamn drain. I am telling you, let him put his money. It will go down the drain. He'll be broke so fucking fast. Because and it's way better to have it go there. I think I'm, I'm yeah, actually really cheered by that video. I, I hope that it's, you know, I think that you're absolutely right. He is going to, he's lose he's going to spend it. He's going to spend it in a way that can do least damage. I yeah. want to say, um, the, f the last thing that LB said to me before we um, prepared to go live was watch the F-bombs. Not so many F-bombs, you said. Oh, okay. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I don't care. I'm the one. Well, I'm the one with. tonight. <laughs> I'm so sorry. It's true. I apologize. I also want to say on the Matt Taibbi piece, 
Yeah. There's literally no amount of money you could pay me to make me want to like hang out with Elon Musk ever. He's the most no. uninteresting person that is walks the face of the earth. Yeah. That's the most th the thing that's the most wretched about this. It's like he fits that profile of these horribly boring people that think they should be stars. And it's just like, no, you're no. you're dumb. You're not funny. You're you're ugly to look at. I hate looking at it. I hate this, that stupid picture they run in the tuxedo where he's smirk. Just stop it. I don't want to look at you like really ever again. Yeah. And uh, maybe it's like a visceral thing. It's and a chemical. It, re we yeah. are chemically repelled by 4chan it, trolls. And yeah. unfortunately, it, I really am. A they and, have uh, risen to quite the power, uh, positions you know, of power. Go away. Nina, can you talk more about this guy, this Barry Side guy? Or do you, is it, is it, you on know, the I can. Yeah, I can. Like I mean, even just not... superficially, because I don't know that much. I know he invented like the power surge or Yeah, you know, know, it's not, um, it's not easy to find out a lot about him. I mean, I'm from Chicago, which is, and he's a Chicago magnate, which is why I, um, I signed on to do this. Um, you know, like a lot of these Midwestern hardcore right wingers, like the U lines and the, um, the Bradley yeah. foundation fine financiers, they, the Midwestern right wingers make something that, it's they're like widgets or like things that yeah. everybody needs. They're like totally mundane and you don't even know what it is or care. And, you know, or it's like beer, like the U lines made it on Schlitz and now they're making it on, yeah. um, on, on packing on cartons. On when were they Schlitz? Can I ask you what it's what beer? Year? It's, it's Milwaukee beer. Right, no, but when, it's, what were the what? years? What were the years in Chicago that they were doing liquor? Well, they're Milwaukee and I don't know. Or Milwaukee. Schlitz beer is still, I mean, it was when I was in high school, there was still Schlitz beer around. But it's, what I'm saying is that it's, he made, you know, he, he got into this business of, um, you know, electronic uh, parts um, in the 80s um, coming off of, I think he was in industrial chemicals and that's actually his rosebud is that he's got super fun stuff going on and that mm. pissed him off so much that he just doesn't want, you know, these guys don't want to, you don't, don't mess with me. Uh, don't mess with the stuff I dump in the ground. I know better. I'm making money. So he's, uh, well, you know, he's, just, he's, he's pivoted from that into this electronic stuff. And it's just timing, you know, he's making this thing that every single human being on the planet needs under their desk right now when Steve Jobs is doing his thing out in California, which actually was an innovation. He right. was, this is not an innovation and he offshores every single thing he makes. It's all coming from China and Vietnam. And uh, yeah, no, what can I say? I mean, he, he got, um, he got uh, discovered and by the right wing in, in early days, he was playing under the radar, throwing little $900 donations around Chicago, Illinois politics, um, early, Man. early days. What's and, early days? and then somebody, somebody, and I know who that, this guy is, somebody realized he's got like, he's always putting money in, but he's not like, we haven't tapped this yet. So they went and figured out who he was and then they just massaged him. And, and, you know, the, well, what you do when you're with a billionaire, you flatter his intellect, you flatter his intellect. Right. And they got then, you know, George Mason University got onto him and George Mason, you know, they, they managed to like extract millions, tens of millions to, um, to uh, rename their law school after um, Scalia, the early departed um, Anthony Scalia and that's the name of the law school. It's a public university, by the way, right? And so thank goodness that it's public because the, the students were able to figure out, they were like, why are you doing this? And then they FOIA'd and the emails of the dean and all of these top lawyers interacting with this dude in Chicago are just like, they're like handbooks for how to suck up and you know butter up a billionaire. And they're just absolutely embarrassing. And they're online. You can see them. And um, he's, um, you know, they've, 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 um, they've renamed the law school. And, um, oh God. and now they're going on to, uh, you know, he decided to leave all his money to, uh, to Leonard Leo. And, you know, again, I go back to like, it's a large, it's a large amount of money. And it was, it was, uh, you know, Citizens United, allows these people 
to hand off money now without even um, being identified. The yeah. IRS under Trump took the rule away that required the um, identification of the of these donors. Oh, Steve Mnuchin, how nice. And uh, I don't know who, whether it was Steve Mnuchin, but it, they took it out. And um, and oh, so nice. now this particular type of uh, organization, which is what Leonard Leo's is, it's a 501c4, I think they call it, it's an ad issue advocacy organization. The issue advocacy organizations don't have to, under this new Trump rule, identify their donors. So the dark money got even darker under Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. And, um, oh and so God. he took advantage of that because he wanted to fly, fly under the radar. And um, he only got revealed because somebody, it's not clear who, um, somebody dropped a dime, either to call called the New York Times or ProPublica, okay. I think it was. Dropped a dime for? Identified him. Okay. Called a reporter and said, there's this thing that just happened. And it actually was months later. You know, okay. this is a record amount of dark money. And here's where it went. Wow. And you can see that the Times broke it around the time the ProPublica broke it at the same time. And that was, wow. somebody had called one of them um, and said, wow. you know, that's a, that's a tip because you wouldn't, they, nobody would have known it. That's, right. I mean, and that's what's going on here. I mean, what they've done with Citizen, what Citizens United did is it privileged speech for rich people. Yeah. Right. So he can see, he can now control. Fortunately, Leonard Leo is going to squander it and spend it on his vineyards. I hope so. But I think this so. kind of money can change, you know, it can transform things. And they've already used, you know, thing is that Leonard Leo, I think, has already cashed out his wad or whatever. Like he right. got the Supreme Court. Now they've got the right wingers. They're trying to get the state judges because the court, the top court's going to throw a lot of things back to the states. So now yeah. they want these state judges who nobody ever paid attention to. So they're kind of paying, they're tr trying to kind of putting money into the state courts. But I think based on that video that Greg showed and, and what, you know, what we kind of know about from that, was it the ProPublica, sorry, the political piece the other day, yeah. the self-dealing that's going on here, the 43 now, what you said, 58 million, like, it's so much money and there's this slush fund and it's yeah. slush fund that people can just dip into. And, and he's probably going to get, I mean, I'm going to go out on a limb here and say, maybe it's like the NRA. They're going to look into the Federalist Society or, you know, whatever. It's not the Federalist, the Marble Freedom Trust and see what's going on. Um, maybe not. I mean, you know, the, the problem is when you've got the Supreme Court in your pocket <laughs> and you're, and you're exactly. doing it. Yeah. And, and any vineyard you want. And right. Nobody's really going to. I don't know. I don't, I don't know think it was an accident that Ron DeSantis was at the end of that little video for him as well. I think yeah. there's probably, you know, there are these um, from the Republican attorney generals to the governors in state by state that are showing everyone else. This is how you can do it. This is how you can take control over the education. This is how you can take control over, you know, even businesses, corporations. He was literally Leonard Leo. If you go through those points that he was doing that video, that was the same exact same litany, right? In the same order as Ron DeSantis in that speech that mm -hmm. he was giving that I put underneath a vita. Right. I missed so, that part of it, but yeah, yeah, it doesn't, you know, they're, they have a they're list good, at, they're they're good like, at lockstep. They're good at yeah. messaging and lockstep. Yeah. They're good at being nodes in a messaging machine. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and the, they're now good I mean, at figuring I heard out your, how I heard to your talk. talk on wokeism, LB. I heard your talk on what, what it means, but, you know, it, it doesn't really matter to them, like what it was or what it's supposed to be. All they care about, all they care about is the Rush Limbaugh um model which mm -hmm. is now the fox model because roger ailes understood how much money you could make mm -hmm. all they care about is, is picking the scab of racism and sexism in this mm -hmm. and now homophobia in this country that's all they care about that's yeah. all it meant all that matters to them now because that's how they keep going they can keep getting money off of it and they can keep getting their people elected up to a point and I mean, that is literally all they have. It is. It's empty. And it's As I said, it's an empty, it's it's an an empty 
it's an empty, it's just propaganda is, is all it is. There's nothing underneath it. And it's propaganda that's been reduced to just they, <laughs> right? So, um, and woke and they, they're the what. The point of understanding it, I think, for, for me is to communicate amongst one of us on ours, you know, one another of like, stop handing shit to these people. Um, stop handing them the content know when you're walking into a trap. And I think one of the things that you said of like, you know, flattering the billionaires, I, I do think what I was trying to say earlier, we were talking about Elon was, you know, maybe it is time. I don't have the bandwidth, but plenty of our listeners do to stop the block, open it back up and come in and challenge him because he is really so narcissistic. He's just paying attention to his own, you know, notifications on his yes, page. I know. And that's just, why I'm doing it. Massage that it might... billionaire. Work him. Say, oh, well, Juan, you don't mean this because you've said this before. Can't you, you know, look at this. And, well, we wouldn't want to do that. Would you allow it? If you call, he's so lost. He has no fucking moral right. comp compass at all. This is a that's disordered right. person on that's every right. level. He well, he's like, all, you know, he's lost in the, um, he's lost. Said, so lost in narcissism. And lost on guide the, him. On the internet I think we and the, can guide the, him. the platform. <laughs> guide and him. You're Don't... seeing it in real time. It's fascinating yeah. to watch. I think we can get um, in there and I think we can guide him. But I what did you mean by what did you mean by um don't stop handing them um you know are you, you I mean believe stop that the way, them I believe that the way that the the progressive the sort of extreme progressive left, not even extreme, but just the very vocal and especially influencers on social media that are in that appropriate stuff. And for that was an appropriation or sort of where these sort of, we're going to blah, 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 that kind of warrior into the, into uh, righteousness hands the other side, all the content that they need and fuels them as opposed to we're going to vote. We're going to like focusing on the things that actually mean something and matter and can, and can organize people and get them out and, and make change happen to, to brandish all this stuff. I do think that when I'm sorry, I'm just going to say it guys. And it could be controversial for me to say this. I don't know. I think that when white suburban or whatever, middle-aged, however you want to qualify someone like me, when the demographic that I'm a part of took over woke and we're like, we're going to be woke and we're going to be, I think it was, that was the opening for, okay, if you're appropriating this, I'm going to, I'm going to use it against you for the Steve Bannons of the world. I don't think that they were willing to touch it as long as it stayed where it, where it originated and where it was as a powerful message of stay aware, right. From with amongst black Americans, stay, you know, be, have your head on a swivel of what's happening here. Make sure you stay engaged. Make sure you stay active. I think as soon as that got taken and run with by by white women, it was ripe for the ripe for everything. And I, I'm sorry, I see that I saw, you know, we saw what well, happened. Well, you know what? I'm not going to blame white women too for this. No, I'm not I'm blaming just... white women for this. I think that's that's not fair. I think it's high, it's college kids, well, white thought. college kids. You know, go to Smith. There's that too, and, yeah, um, that and too. who you know who have parents whose trust funds are are invested in fossil fuels and companies that just don't do anything about racism. And these schools, like over, I did a big piece about this. I was very busy last year with journalism. I haven't done any lately, but the the um, the the, the university um, free speech issue. And you go to Oberlin and, you know, Oberlin's been ha been hammered with a thirty seven million dollar verdict on that racial racism bakery thing. And that was you know, the university was getting behind. They didn't sue the kids. They sued the university for getting for supporting and amplifying this this like not actually true allegation about the, I mean, they may not well be, um, they may well be old, good old boys in Ohio, but they were not arresting that kid over ra for racism. Um, and they went after him and they, they had to pay up $37 million. And what, you know, my view on that college wokeism is white kid wokeism is, you know what, um, if the college is really cared 
they would say to their incoming students, and I'm talking about the big, you know, Yale and all of the, you know, Smith and Brown, they would say to the students in their applications, um, reveal your parents' trust fund um, investments. And, and if, you're, if they're investing in fossil fuels or they're investing in these companies or they've given donations to Republicans, um, we don't want your money. Put your fucking money where your mouth is, you know, and, and, and the students like running around calling each other names and, and virtue signaling and canceling each other because they didn't use the right words and coming after. It's not the white women who've been on the woke um, you know, it's it actually is something that's gone on in the universities, but the platform is that, but I, swinging now yeah. so that's so far over that now you've got from yeah. what used to be, oh, liberal snowflakes need trigger warnings if you're going to talk about sexual assault or, you know, racism or slavery. Now it's, oh, those poor white men, young men are being made to feel guilty and un made to feel uncomfortable in their classrooms. And when they are forced to take a history class about civil, about uh, slavery yeah. in the South. And yeah. that's what these guys are doing. They're putting it into the law of the land in yes, Florida and in other States, because all the other States are going to follow. And it's just laughable and ridiculous and the courts aren't going to hold it up. So I'm I don't know about that, Nina. About I don't yeah, know. I would not blame white. I don't women. know that the courts aren't going to hold it up, and that's. Yeah, I would not. I wouldn't blame white women for for what they're doing. They're just looking for. I'm talking about what I saw. Stuff, the people that they're okay. looking for stuff that is easily, you know, like when they send TPUSA sends Tony Laren to um, the University yeah. of New Mexico, or not Milo, but you know, uh, people like that. I can't think of the one they sent after that, and these kids come out. And they kick a door down or they start yelling and then they all they want to do is get this video so they can give it to Fox the next day and go, look at the dirtbag left. Look what they're doing. They're trying to shut us down. So, you know, it's that kind of thing, that overreaction to, you know, and, and so easily provoked by their okay, bullshit. So let me let me say something here. So I am in I am in agreement with you. I'm talking about that exact same thing that you landed on at the end of the, the sort of righteous over re, overreaction, over heralding specific to the woke thing that I witnessed happening on social media. And I saw who was amplifying it and I saw where it was. This is back in it, 2017, 2018. I'm talking about that specific moment in time, specifically on Twitter, what I saw. And, and then I saw it become the thing of like, oh, we can go anti-woke now. We can go anti-woke now because we have some uh, quite a few ridiculous human beings. They were just being ridiculous with it. I'm sorry, they were. It just opened that door. So it's the carelessness, whether it's happening with, you know, young people who are, you know, young and, and you know, we're all young. I don't I, think I, it matters I, who's, I don't right. think it matters who's promoting it. They are always on the lookout. That's to, right. To to, to uh, pick the scab of racism and sexism and homophobia in this country. And that's how they get rich. That's yeah. what they watch Rush Limbaugh do. And they it's get power. A model, and now Fox News is doing it. It's a yep. model of of media that now this political party has taken on. And yeah. and it's you're right. I mean, it's all they've got. And. Honestly, oh, I don't think it's going to go ways. very far. I don't I'd think they're going to survive. Ways. I don't think they're going to survive um, what's going to happen here. We, we haven't talked about like in, imminently Trump will be indicted. Yes, he'll make money, raise money. Oh, on going it. into that. But all Let's of these things now. that happen are going to be pushing people away. You know, right minded people out in the hinterlands who go to church. And I mean, I'm not talking about the hardcore white evangelicals, but all these other people out there who are but just watching this go on are revolted. And I don't think that he's got a chance of coming back. I think it's his, his model maybe, but meatballs DeSantis has no charm. That's not, he's not going to win. And I don't think, I think that, you know, we're, we're not smooth sailing. There's a lot of problems in this country, but I think that the pendulum is going to swing back towards the middle here. 
And that's why I got to make that my final word because I've got a plane to catch. Really, I know you're the guy I was going to ask. I kept going to say, Um, I am leaving the country for a few days. Oh, Nina, thanks so much for joining us. Always great to see you. Um, Nina, anytime, guys. I am so, I'm such an admirer of your Substack and the work that you do, the energy that you're, I mean, God, it's amazing, Greg. Thank you. I appreciate it. And it's great to see you too, LB. You're looking lovely. Oh, thanks, Nina. It's good to see you. All right. Have a great trip, Nina. Great to see you. Okay. I love it. Um, Bye, Nina. A couple couple thoughts on that. um, Yeah. What you guys were talking about. Yeah. I know what you're saying about, you know, but it could be anything. They'll attack anything. They attack like critical race theory. That has nothing to do with anything. That's just like geeky law professors talking about stuff. You know, they, they, they'll find the thing, hone in on it. And it, it's like a goddamn tsunami. And I think one thing that, that happened out of the, the whole woke thing is there was kind of a, a brouhaha about the appropriation of the use of the word. And then I think people felt bad and then people pull back. This happened when the after the rally. Remember the the uh, the women's march, the original one. You know, in in 2017, a lot of the organizers of that there was a lot of infighting suddenly, and and people lost enthusiasm. I don't know. There was they try to do that shit to divide people up. That's what they do. And one of the techniques they try, is, they do it, and they they, make and they feel that you know? in the divisiveness. Yeah, the people that are using the term woke in 2018 meant well, and that's really all. And they're trying to be allies. And at the end of the day, I think that's all that matters. The demographic group responsible for the horrible fuckery in this country is white middle aged men. Thank you very much. Woohoo! It's us, LB, it is. not it, you. Sorry, it is. it is, and it's also again, I just want to say this it's i want to if we could if we could actually zero in on where the openings are created for that yes they're going to go after every anything they're going to find anything they're going to do anything but if you look at it usually there's an opening that's given yeah yeah, yeah sure and the opening is almost is 100% tied to a recklessness a carelessness, an overreaction, or, you know, and we're human beings, so it's hard. And you're, we're on these stupid ass platforms that agitate, right? And so people get agitated and they go running with stuff. But it's just like, again, it's, there's got to be some. What you're we, saying we, is, I know what you're saying. Book. Yeah. We have to be vigilant. We have to be. No. Really vigilant. Okay. Next topic, uh, down with people. We're, we're so running late today. <laughs> we're so really late, and I have no idea how any of you feel about it, the, the, any of that know. because like, we I couldn't. We'll, we'll go it. through this fast anyway. I don't have that much to say. I just wanted to call attention to it because shit's happening yeah. in Israel, and uh, yeah. there's massive protests. There's protests within the government um, yeah. because Netanyahu is a fucking criminal. Yes, he's a crook. He's a he is. One of the people, one of these malevolent forces yes. that's responsible for the fuckery in the world. Yes. He's absolutely that. Yeah. And he is tr- he, he snuck his way back in there. Um, his wife went to the hair salon or whatever, get her fucking nails done. And there was protesters outside, like in front of Kavanaugh's house. There's an interview with her. I was so afraid for my life as I was getting my, my blowout. It's like, settle down. It's peaceful protests. If you don't like this lifestyle resign and leave that's what you should do and now there's talk of that they're going to do a thing where there's been talk of they're going to offer him basically indemnity in exchange for get the fuck out i i read that people within high rankings government have proposed this um i don't know what's going to happen but i feel like this isn't being reported up that much here it's not and and And, honestly um, here there iran it's very strange i'm i have such side eye on that whole thing yeah it's it's one thing to like know that you're that you know people feel like it's tricky or they can't get in or you know we possibly got some you know always have sort of like whatever from the from you know all of these other nation states sort of with and us over there like everyone's always mixing in everybody's business but um i i i don't get the lack of coverage I don't get the lack of coverage. Now, I haven't 
looked as carefully as I should before making something like that. But it's one of those things where if there's a mass shooting, you can't avoid the coverage. If there's, you know, anytime Trump farts something, you can't avoid the coverage. There's it, a balloon from, from China. We're going to talk about can't that for avoid five that coverage. fucking days. It, yeah. And this is just, I'm not, it's not coming in. And I don't think I have shut everything down uh, to the degree. I mean, I'm not paying attention to news in the way that I used to in terms of it being on all the time or whatever, but it still would have come. I feel like I would have seen something and I haven't seen anything except for the accounts that I follow on Twitter that are journalists that are covering it. So is anybody else at, at a loss about, you know, like there's massive protests in, in Israel and Iran huge. and in Georgia right now. You know, yeah, and, now I've and, seen more on Georgia than I have on Israel. Yeah. And uh, I don't know. I, I, I Georgia, the understand. country, everybody, not Georgia, the state. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just to be clear, you know, you never know. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. Maybe so what do you, uh, Atlanta, you know, yeah. I feel like, uh, first of all, yay, Israeli people. Yeah. It's, it's or, nice to see because the guys, nice you know, see. and it, there's always this fear of talking about it because, there, you know, you don't want to be said, well, you, it's it's anti-Semitic. It's not. Bibi Netanyahu is a criminal. He's a and thug. any any government should not want a criminal to be in charge of the uh, be the head of state. The guy's trying to consolidate power, you know, steal the judiciary. And that's that's dictatorship land. And then and if that happens, what's the United States going to do? Are we going to continue well, to be really good friends with 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 a dictatorship? I think what, I don't know. first of all, what's concerning to me is so many uh, on uh, in the Republican Party look up to him and look to him for like, here's a roadmap. You can, like, that's what terrifies me on uh, on a core level of like, oh, Jesus, he's showing Donald how to do it again. Uh, number one. Number yeah. two, um, it was never, ever acceptable or ever an excuse to bring to for one polit our political party, one party in a two party system to so fully embrace this guy when it was clear he was a Putin puppet and, and buddies with him. And it just all of the fuckery around BB for so, so long. It's always been awful. He's always been horrendous. He's always been, I'm sorry, guys. He he's, this is, this is a mafia state, if you look at it that way, in terms of the kind of control he has and who this man is connected to. And the fucking money launderers and, and oligarchs that he's got going on in there. I'm sorry, I keep doing my, trying not to do that hand symbol. It's coming out of me. Um, that he's got going on um, uh, in, in, in his inner circle there since before Donald was elected. Yeah. Right. The the inroads that uh, that the a bunch of Russian gangsters have made into this guy or his inroads into them. I can't tell. Um, you know, this was someone that I think it was OK to say uh, be anti BB for a very long time. Um, I certainly was really, really vocal about that guy in uh, at the beginning of the Trump administration, especially because I just thought it was so dangerous how he was embracing because probably because of Jared, but I think also because of Donald and all of the, you know, don't forget all of this disgustingness that Donald and Jared were up to with him yeah. in our changing our positions in Israel and in on Russia as a whole. So it's hard for me to see BB separate from Putin. It always has been. I think it's probably hard to see him separate from all the other gang lords that are running these big nation States um, that he, uh, buddies up to, including G. So I, I don't know. I, I, it, it's such a, hopefully the Israeli people can do, can accomplish throwing him out, but he's got powerful forces. He's aligned with powerful forces. He's aligned with, and always has been. And he just, this is a shameless, shameless man, shameless man. Yeah. Do clearly, anything. and he's married to a shameless woman. That shameless video, shameless woman. Just... Remember when they were squatting when they got yeah. voted? They got they, they were squatting the election, and she decided to squat because she didn't want to give up her mansion. Mm -hmm. Fuck these yeah. people. I yeah. hope they get thrown out. I think that there seems to be a lot of 
um, movement among very powerful political people there to get rid of him. It, it's every day that goes by, it seems like there's something a little more encouraging where, and, and the people in the street. And I think that, you know, ironically, exactly. not ironically, but the, the, the papers there are great. You know, Harad's, they, they do great reporting on what's going on. Um, yes. And I think, you know, the vast majority of the people in Israel don't want the guy there. I think it, it is kind of a, a thing where he's because of the parliamentary system and all this stuff. It's not a it's not directly elected. It's not even our stupid electoral college thing. It's more complicated than that. So, um, you know, there isn't a direct method to do this. It's it's complicated. And, uh, you know, well, look how we got in, though. So that is always concerns me. You know, let's think of Nina and the pendulum swinging and maybe mm -hmm. it, it yeah. is always swinging. Um and kind of hold that in our in our hopes and our thoughts for the Israeli people. But the you know he got into power by embracing the the most horrendous uh, party in there. It, it just it, the extreme extreme far right. Just so I don't yeah. know. I, I I'm worried about it all in terms of observing yeah. it from afar. On the one hand, and on the on the other hand. Um, because I don't know what we'll do. I just can't imagine this administration that we have now embracing BB becoming a full-on authoritarian and strongman who's just abused power to the degree to where, you know, he's, you know, yeah, had a state for life, like Xi. I, I just, I can't imagine. 29, 20 to zero. That's what he's going for. Yeah. I don't it, know. It, it, it's, we can't, U.S. can't you know, can't abide. The dude does not yeah, abide. Um, I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Announcements. We have very few announcements. We want to say thank you to everybody for watching. Thank you for joining. Thank you for subscribing. Um, if anybody didn't get their stickers, I've been sending them out in batches. Uh, hopefully everybody that's, that's uh, asked for them has gotten them. You get a sticker. If you're a high level member, actually get more than one sticker because they're small. Uh, so I send a bunch, right? You have your stickers. I haven't seen them in I, the background. You're like, I'm I don't think sorry. you like them. I know. Like them. Well, I, 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 I put it on the fireplace. Am I, I put, where am I I'm, just, I'm just giving you a hard time. Maybe I'll put them on something and then prop that thing up on a yeah. book. Yeah. Uh, this episode's, oh, wait. <laughs> I was just going to say the same. I'm just going to do the same thing. Where did it go? Oh, we both put it up. Stop <laughs> it. Okay. You do it. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. I'm normally doing that. Oh yes, good. Love yeah, you, Chuck. Good chunk. Yeah. Uh yeah. Make a lot of money, total total dictatoring. It's a good, it's a good one. Um, hair dye not included. Uh and thanks oh, well, everybody. That's you know. And white women Americans. <laughs> Let's see what happens. Um okay. What do you what do you say? I, I said I went after I, I like I did not expect to go after those two individuals and, and oh. that individual in that group, but there it is. I'm sick yeah. of it. I've, I've had enough. I've, I've had, had enough, enough of people being ridiculous criminals. That's it. I'm done. I, okay. I think we can draw the line at this at this kind of thing. It's just too many oh people get hurt and die because of the greed of of you know too few individuals. There's my hot take. That, this is the this is the insightful commentary that you get when you tune in here. Bad people are bad and should stop hurting people. That's it. That's, That's what it. I've got. Yeah. And you're doing it without an f bomb, and I'm do I'm using them all. Yeah. Yeah. I'm um, so sorry. Okay, we got to go to our. Terrible. Do we have any more? Any more? Uh, I have no one more announcements. They put my podcast in the Daily Beans feed, and I got a lot more uh, a lot more um, downloads today, which was exciting. So Yay. lots of people heard that Avita song. I feel like that can stick because I don't think there's much with her yet with that Casey DeSantis, and I don't know. I a veto without charisma is exactly what she is. It, it's such a great line. You mm. nailed her. I, I just want to pause this for a second. Go ahead. Uh, what was it again that had you focus on her? What were we talking about? We were talking about something and it, something she did. Was it that for me, I was just annoyed that she's walking around with like these cape outfits that I, I just can't take it anymore. Um, but you had learned something about her. Do you remember? No, I mean, all she right. got about the golf remember. course. She was a news person, but they're all in with all the, you know, they're in with bad people. They're in with the Leonard Leo group. Hmm. They're in with all the, you know, the, the Roger Stones, the Matt Gates. It, it, it's, it's, it's a, we, it's not a great group of people. 
you know, it's there's not something a, about the DeSantis though that they're so transactional. Yeah. You know, I mean, even Donald Trump of it all that remember they were doing the commercials, hugging the Trumpy bear and with their kids and oh, Trump, 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 because they knew that would get them into power mm-hmm. when he was running for governor. And now he's like, yeah, fuck that guy. Yeah, screw that guy. Screw Mr. Trump. So it's, you know, the, I, I, I think they might even be as a couple more transactional than Donald and Melania. And so let's just see how, or Jared and Ivanka would be better. Uh, you know, let's just see how that goes. I, no one wants Jared and Ivanka to, to run. I can't imagine people are going to want Evita and her meatball. I, I, it's, it's, I would like to think not. And after hearing I, him talk in that clip, um, no, not happening. Yeah. Nobody's listening to that voice for four years. We'll it's, just, it's just not going to happen. It's just, we'll sorry. Uh, okay. Last but not least, Ides of March, there was a tweet that somebody sent out some, Attorney in the know, supposedly beware the Ides of March. Now, lots of uh, legal people who know a lot more than we do are jumping up and down because, oh, the Trump indictment is imminent in New York. And aren't we so excited? And uh, I don't know. I'm not actually that excited. I don't know. Is it is it pathetic? Is it bathos? Because we wanted this for so long. I finally get what I want and I'm like, eh, is it like a fable? Or is it just because we know that this is probably not going to work and it's just kind of a you know, of all the things they can indict him for, this is kind of the least effective and most kind of, you know, lame. I don't know. What do you think? Uh, I'm not, I think the Stormy Daniels thing, I saw somebody compare it to, was illegally looking at it and saying, this is fair. Oh, it was Renato. Renato. I can't remember his last name now. Oh, yeah. yeah. Mariotti. So, yeah. Thank you. To, um, what happened to John Edwards Mm. and you know, that this is, I think for Alvin Bragg to ignore all of the financial crimes and only go after uh, the one, you know, the one financial crime that's tied to politics and to a campaign um, in the, in the, this sort of election, what is it? What does it call? It's like a campaign contribution crime. Right. Puts it right for a mistress, puts it right into the camp of John Edwards. And that, and he got off for all of that because, you know, it, those are harder, those are harder cases. And then everyone gets to go, well, it was all so political. And what do we know? So I, I still cannot stand Alvin Bragg. I'm sorry. I, I, I can't get on the train of that guy. I could be completely, completely wrong about it. But um, it just seems like he was forced into a position where he had to do, he can, he had to do something because it was just looking so bad for him. And he chose the one thing that Pomerantz even called the zombie part of this, all of the case against him that included Mazars and Deutsche Bank and for the money laundering, for the fraud for the bank fraud, for the loan fraud, for all of the fraud that mm-hmm. this man committed as a criminal. And Alvin Bragg's making it just look like, well, he just maybe he's just a dirty politician or he just, you know, did got caught doing something that politicians do. I don't like it. I don't. It, it's not going to be effective. We need the rule of law to show up. That's what we need. We need the rule of law to show up and inject truth and fact about who that man is and always has been and all the motherfuckers around him that are criminals. That's what we need. That actually is the antidote to this propaganda that is being fire hosed at us from a coordinated effort. I'm sorry, it's coordinated between the Republican Party, Fox News, this major media outlet, and the social media, their social media cohort, billionaire cohorts um, that own and control Twitter. And Zuckerberg has gone quiet and dark, I feel like, recently. I don't know why, but certainly there was, he had his era with Facebook where he was flagrantly and blatantly promoting Donald Trump and promoting this criminal crime family to yeah. help them not only get into office, but to keep power there and to shelter the American people from get, having access to the information that would bring the truth, bring keep the truth alive and not kill the truth and kill facts. 
right? And create this alternative reality that we've been, we're up against constantly now. We're in this Orwellian struggle. And what is the thing that will stop that is the rule of law. Yep. That's what stops it. When you're looking at evidence in an indictment, it stops it. Maybe it's not going to be a perfect case. Maybe they don't win it. Maybe the jury pool will be so infected. But at least the facts will be out there because we've been relying on journalism to put it out there for us. And guess what? That's failed. Yeah. That's failed. It just has. It's become bifurcated to having always having two sides to everything. That's that's so in that failure, the only thing left to deliver fact and truth about the state that we're in, who these people are, what they're connected to, what their agenda is, what's behind them, what they're, you know, this whole fucking thing that we've been living through now for six fucking years since that, that guy, sorry about the F-bombs, everybody. Oh my God, I cannot believe, Greg, this is terrible. That This is awful. I am so awful. That, But, you know. Because you're feeling better. That's everything, all. I'm feeling better. Everything yeah. that got that man into his position of power as the most powerful man in the world running our country and has kept that power structure around him intact to a certain degree that it could control every single aspect of the narrative so that truth and fact can be destroyed. The thing that will stop that and will counter that is the rule of law. Yes, we need to vote. Yes, it's about voters voting out that power, which we can't vote out the Supreme Court. Nope. We can't. Sorry. Done. And there's no there's no appetite nationally for expanding the court, according to Sheldon Whitehouse, who is on my pod. You know, it's not something that people care about enough. I Maybe that, that will change. I think, I think there was at a point in time and the people, the people, the new president at that time, the new administration, uh, and the Congress and this, and we didn't have the Senate yet, just did not feel like they wanted to go there. Yeah, they wanted. They had other things. And granted, we had a pandemic to get out of. We had a vaccine to get out there to everybody. There were other stuff on the table, but that was the long game that needed to be addressed on day one. Uh, because this is critical to the survival of our democracy. That was the vaccine that we needed was to expand that court. And they lost their opportunity to do it. Just like mm -hmm. Merrick Garland by not jumping on day one and bringing those uh, 10 counts of obstruction of justice that, that the special counsel had prepared and was waiting for the guy to get the fuck out of office. So that's and, and a different attorney general that wasn't a corrupt piece of shit. Like who, who even knows what Barr was? What is that creature? I don't even know what that is. That's some kind of weird troll. Ugh, I don't know. What Maybe that, the UFOs are coming to get him. Maybe the and UFOs are be. coming to get him and take him back. But, you know, to actually have an attorney general in there that was interested in the rule of law and interested in the Constitution and interested in protecting democracy and not trying to throw everything off with his Iran-Contra baggage, right, to to you know, overthrow our democracy, you know, to, to do away with the rule of law and, and the checks and balances that the rule of law is supposed to have on power. Right. So why didn't Merrick Garland do that? I don't know. He was crying. That's all like, that's all I was watching was this guy crying about himself. And he still hasn't, even if this comes to pass on March 15th, it is not Merrick Garland's doing. No, it's going to be Jack. It's going to be no. Jack it's going to be Bragg. And for this, I'm is talking going to be about Bragg for for the eyes of New York. That's Manhattan. The eyes of March is going to yeah. be New York. It's going to possibly be Georgia. It's going to be these the attorneys, the generals, and the district attorneys in the states. And you know, and what's happening in Georgia now? Georgia has just been passing laws to allow the legislature there, the Republican mm -hmm. legislature there, to throw out um, Fannie Willis to just go ahead and fire her if they want to. If they don't yeah. like what she's investigating, so. This is a crime syndicate that took over the White House in 2016 that is still running itself like the organized crime syndicate that they are, fusing a quasi-mafia state like what is in Russia now when Vladimir Putin got in. 
through one political party by fusing itself with a political party and they're on a fucking crime spree still. And what they're trying to do is make sure that the rule of law doesn't come for them, which is why the rule of law must come for them. Yep. Yep. Well said. Well said. And we're still waiting. I mean, I know we have all these signs and this is why I feel so blah about it. It's like, I'm so fucking tired of reading the tea leaves and, oh, something might happen. That's the headline. Okay. I'll believe it when I see it, you know? And is it going to be a strong and I don't know, you know, of all the things that, that he's done that have been bad in his life, which are many, many, many. This is the thing. Okay. I mean, I'm glad. I'll be glad if he gets indicted. I'll be glad if he gets convicted. But, um, you know, Where's the feds, man? Come on, bring it. Where, where's? I'm sorry. Where was? Where's New York? Yeah. Where's New York? Yeah. That's where he committed all these financial crimes for decades and decades and decades. You know, you and I did that. Um. That piece way back when, when it was just me typing in answers, and we were talking on the phone, mm. but I was shy as could be. Tinker Taylor soldier spy, right? Mm -hmm. And the the whole confidential informant thing. Right. And um, I stand by that. You know, I stand by that. And I feel like what we're watching, and that was what, 2018? When was that? 2019? I feel uh, like- 2019, 20, early 2020, I think. Mm -hmm. I think. I, uh, I've, I've lost all it track. It was earlier that. than that. Yeah, Almost it was it. earlier, than, way earlier than that. I feel like what we're watching now, because I know when my- person told me he's a CI. Um, I just feel like what we're watching now is the ramifications of that very special relationship. Yeah. That he had with New York and with the, with the feds. Yeah. Unfortunately. Yeah. Well, we'll see. Maybe this will be, uh, maybe this will be the thing. I don't have enormous confidence here, but, uh, I don't either. I, I wouldn't be hopeless. It's just, I think we have to put our hope in other areas. Um, and sort of dwell there. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm very hopeful about young people. I am. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you did Victor's show. We forgot to, we forgot to announce that. Oh, yeah. I forgot to announce that. Mm -hmm. I did Victor. She's show this morning, very early in the morning. Not for me, because I'm up early, but to get ready that early is a little, is a little much. Yeah. Um, so if you guys don't know about that, I, I recommend watching Victor's show. I don't know if he does it every day. It's, um, what is it? On the Move with Victor She. It's a Politicon show that he does on YouTube uh, for like half an hour in the mornings. And he just covers all the big sort of news beats and the stuff that keep keeps him hopeful and has a guest on. So it was mm -hmm. fun. I, I can't, this this young person is so fantastic. I just love him. Yeah, he's great. Yeah, he's great. I'm not gonna, I, I am not going to disagree. No. The silence you hear is the sound of me not arguing. Yeah. No, we love Victor. He was great. I talked a lot this episode. Sorry, Greg. Do you have anything more you want to say? I like I like when you talk a lot. It, it's, I know uh, you do. Yeah. It's but then I get backlash. <laughs> that I get yelled at. No, 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 no. It, yeah. It's uh, I, I don't think I have anything else to add. I mean, I think... Uh, you know, lots of stuff happened this week. We didn't even talk about Tucker Carlson at all, which is crazy. But I don't know what else there is to say. He's a fucking liar. He's been now we know he's a liar. There's nothing left to say. He lies egregiously and feeds zombies bullshit that they want to hear. And that's just what he does. He's a fabulous. He's a, uh, uh, you know, he's a he's basically a prostitute in a sense. He's just you, you, you turn on the channel and he's going to give you the show you want. And he doesn't. And and as soon as you leave, he's going to make fun of you for being dumb and ugly. That's what he. That's what he is. Yeah, right? that's the part that's. It's not surprising, but yeah, you never think you're going to see that, mm. right? I get a yeah. chance to see that. Uh, the contempt that it's so clear that these people have for their audience and their guests. Um, it's just it's so gross. Yeah, these are, it's just. Uh, oh wait, we have to. Sharon did ask about the, uh, the, there's not much to say. Did you hear about this story where, where Elon Musk like no. fired this, this employee who has, who's disabled. He says muscular dystrophy, I think. Oh. And, uh, 
you know, he's in a wheelchair and he's a brilliant guy. And I think he sold some, his company. Oh, this is the guy that sold the company to, yeah. to Musk? To and, Twitter. And, and apparently me. by firing him, he has to pay him like a hundred million dollars. And it has ripple effects because he doesn't have a hundred million dollars lying around anymore. I guess the Emerald mine went dry, did it? So um, he, they know the Tesla people are like, shit, he's going to start cashing out. So Tesla stop drop, like all this shit happened because <laughs> Musk was on Twitter, like a fucking moron, you know, bit violating HIPAA law and all that. He's going to have a huge lawsuit on his Good. hands probably. And uh, that's going to what ultimately what's going to shut him up is this, this kind of thing where he's going to get sued Good. for like a billion dollars, you know? And, uh, and it's going to shut up. Sharon, thank you for reminding me about, about that. I, I don't think there's much to say about it. I, Elon is an asshole. He is a, he is just apart from everything else. He's just a dick. I mean, he's not a good person at all. He's just an asshole. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, I know. still think though, I, maybe there is something in that you guys, the audience, our commenters here, our members or subscribers, you maybe talk amongst yourself. I know you guys are all in the sort of DM groups. I mean, I do think, if there was sort of like a two or three week period, it's like, you know what? We're going to, we're going to work a lot. Let's work him. You guys are smart enough to do it, to just come up with like, let's just reply. There's, there are, there's a tone that he, re he replies to there's, you know, he doesn't want a mirror. And so if you can produce a mirror, that's not it done in a threatening way where he's like, Oh no. Yeah. I don't want to do that. No, I don't want, I no, we're not saying that we're saying this. Oh, good. Thank you. You know, we knew you'd be rash and still like, remember to pet the baby. That's the saying that we have, right? Pet the baby. You're dealing with the little baby here. <laughs> Got to pet that ego, you know, make him, make it nice for him. It's not, it's not being sycophantic or overly complimentary. It's just like, Oh, little baby, you know, you just need to, Take it, be gentle. And, and, you know, you don't want to do that. Do you want to really want to do that? I wonder, I wonder if there's a tone that can be found, a, an approach with this guy with responding with the actual facts when he's running off and doing his 4chan thing, which is all the time, right? Just being a troll. And he, cause he, that gives him a, you know, they get juice out of that. These, these narcissists, right? They, they have their injury and it, they don't understand why they have it really. They don't understand why the things that they say and the things that they do cause people to react towards them in a negative way. And so when they get that negative response, they don't, he doesn't understand it. Well, I didn't, you know, you ah. and then what Twitter has done and what these tools is sort of trolling does and what it really is at its core is for people who are socially disconnected to others in such a way that they don't understand why they're not accepted, why they're not, why, they, why people react to them in, in ways that are, that are like, you can't say that, you know, don't do that. That's wrong. They don't understand that. And so they, they don't know how to control a social situation, especially when they're kids and as they're developing. And what trolling gives them is a way to have power and control socially over another person's reactions right? Which was what they always felt like people had it over them and they were lost and didn't understand. So that's the psychology of, of, a, of a, an Elon, let's say. I don't know the man personally, but that's sort of the very in-your-face rudimentary psychology of him. So that's why he loves trolling. That's why he loves, you know, he thinks that's fun. Oh, it's put his fun again because it's all that we, we're upsetting people, meaning I'm controlling other people's emotions instead of being lost and confused over why they're having emotional reactions to me. It's a powerful drug that it's, you might as well just be addicting into heroin, right? You might as well be giving him opioids because it, this is something that he could not manage when he was a kid, caused him injury when he was a kid. And now he's got the reins. He's got control over this thing that used to hurt him. And that's where you got to enter in there. Just see if you can see if you can figure out how to get in there and encourage him to keep his control, but you know, he, he doesn't want to be that. You don't want to be that, right? You want to be this, and you know, these are the facts. I don't know. Maybe it'll work. Basically, do occupational therapy on Elon Musk. This is what I'm asking mm. me to do. Oh my God! I thought you liked the audience. 
<laughs> I do like the audience, but I, I let's I, I think it's worthy a worthy experiment. I could just could just be the evening. I could just be coming pulling this out of my ass for tonight, and I feel very differently when I wake up. But I think it's you know if you want to interact with him, I just block him. But maybe instead of blocking him and making fun of him, maybe there's another way to interact with him that can kind of nudge him. Just nudge him. I think we should all change our avatars to cat turd and and I could be like and just a number after. So I can be like cat turd seven hundred and eighty four thousand. And maybe then he'll listen. Maybe. Right. He seems to respond well to cat turds. He loves cat turd. It's weird how he loves cat turd. Yeah, he loves yeah. cat turd. Cat turd yeah. has the ear or just yeah. we all we all get off. You know, we all give it up. But we can't we can't see the territory. It's, we can't do that. I, I, I really don't. I, I don't think it's. It's useful to do that personally. I just, I don't know. Well, here's someone asking one, just one little lesson. Cause I know we're exhausted with it. Wouldn't cause we're basically doing an after hours. We're just continuing with the longest five, eight ever. <laughs> Wouldn't ignoring him completely do the same thing. No, actually, because he's got the, he's got his trolls feeding his narcissistic supply. And it is, it, it is shaping discourse. Um, to the degree that we had, you know, and it's it's feeding the Congress critters, right, who are looking for their own content mm -hmm. and they're running these committees now. You know, if the Republicans hadn't taken the House, then this would all be moot. But they did. And so and it doesn't matter by how little of a margin. I mean, it kind of does in other ways. But for this, it doesn't. They're controlling those committees. And so we're just going to get these ridiculous hearings. And God bless the Democratic Congress, <laughs> the Democrats on these committees who are prepared and know how to handle the Jim Jordans of the world. They're doing a stellar job, I think, to so that this doesn't turn into a content machine for Fox News, which is what it's designed to do, and for the Republican Party for their for their ads and for where they're going, you know, trying to uh, take back the Senate and win the presidency. So. I don't know. I think it's, I think it's, if you're going to stick in there with Twitter, I think it might be worth it. But, and we've got a lot of smart people on here. Maybe they're the ones to figure it out. See if you can nudge Elon. Nudge him. Yeah. Nudge him. I don't nudge. Know. Get, get to Mars. Mar Mars isn't going to be there forever. Get on the old uh, rocket ship before it's too late, man. It's going to leave without yeah. you. <laughs> okay. I think we're, I think we're out of time. I think we're, we're out of time. Sorry guys. Don't worry, time. Everybody Steve, else. Thanks for the question. Um, or the comment, or is it a question and a comment? It's a question yes. and a comment. Question and a comment. Uh, okay. I'll take it off. We'll be back next week. Um, next week is St. Patrick's Day, which means nothing to me, but it, it, it means is. a lot to me. I'm not going to have green beer, though. Please don't. Um, okay. Yeah. St. Patrick was Italian. That's all I know. So I'm going to say it's an Italian guy went to Ireland, but Italian. So, so remember that. So it's me and you. Me and yeah, you together. It works. It works. Okay, good. Um, thanks everybody for watching. Uh, thanks to Nina Burley for joining us uh, tonight. Thanks for thanks to True Player for uh, moderating in the uh, chat room. Thanks for all the great uh, chat comments and all that kind of stuff. And uh, that's all I got. We'll see you next week. Have a great weekend, everybody. Bye, everyone.